Hey all, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna be discussing how AI killed Tailwind's business and how to avoid a similar fate. So if your main revenue stream is from templates, courses, or small SaaS products, AI may already be undercutting your business. That's what happened to Tailwind CSS, or really the company behind Tailwind CSS, whose revenue is now down 80% since 2023. Now I'm particularly interested in this as a majority of my side project income comes from info products like blogs, YouTube videos, and project templates like Cloud seed, all of which are particularly vulnerable to this kind of arbitrage. And so in this post, we'll explore what happened, how AI is killing Tailwind's business, and what we can learn to avoid AI's undercutting our own businesses going forward. So first off, what is Tailwind? Tailwind CSS is a popular styling library getting 26 million weekly downloads on NPM. It's probably one of the more popular, if not the most popular modern libraries out there. And I personally like it. I use it here to style this blog. I use it with Daisy UI, which gives it some like basic um, templates and components, which makes things pretty easy to work with, especially with AI. Why with AI? Well, AIs are particularly good at it because the styling happens in line and close to the underlying markup. This is opposed to like CSS, which is cascading style sheets where these, there's classes and the classes might affect things underneath them. And so because this stuff's in line, it allows the AIs to tweak the styling without needing to understand the whole app's styling hierarchy and how the markup is put together, which can get pretty complicated, whether in a React app or doing server-side rendering. And if it needs to do that, one, it it's probably going to get things wrong, but two, it's also going to take up a lot of its context window because it has to read all that stuff and understand like how it fits together. And context windows are honestly one of the biggest bottlenecks on AI agents today. And so that's taking up stuff that you can't use to actually build the feature that, that you care about. And so AI is pretty good at Tailwind. People love Tailwind. They spit it out a lot. Um, and so it's big. It's getting bigger with the rise of AI. And as the creator says, you know, Tailwind is more popular than ever now, which makes it so odd that it's now facing an existential crisis. So Tailwind's business is dying. So Adam Wethen, who's the creator of Tailwind, uh, made this post on GitHub. I'm not gonna read the whole thing, um, but it's here and there's a link to it here if you wanna read the whole thread and get more context on it. Um, but basically the parts that I'm interested in are that the views to their documentation is down 40% from early 2023. The revenue is down 80% and they've already laid off 75% of their engineers. They only had four, um, but still they went down from four to one. Now I do want to note that these numbers are self-reported and unverified. Um, it's a private company. They don't share that much about the revenue and, and all of that stuff. So I can't verify, but this is the creator and CEO of Tailwind Labs. So I'm assuming it's probably correct. So now how did AI kill Tailwind's business? So from the data, less people go to their docs, um, less people see the ads for Tailwind Plus, which is a UI templating package they sell and really where all their revenue comes from. Um, basically it has like, this is a cool landing page. This is how you do like cool drawers. This is like a pretty, FAQ section, kind of stuff like that. And so because less people are seeing the ads, less people buy Tailwind Plus. And the leading hypotheses for why this drop in traffic and behavior is happening is one, the AIs are good enough at Tailwind to not need the docs. So less people look it up or see the ads and buy plus. It's like, you know, on my site, I could be like change the background from, you know, the dark gray that it is now to white. And it would be able to do that super easy. I don't need to go look up what the things are in Tailwind. Um, it can just do that. I can say like, hey, make these little list things, not a dot, make it like an emoji or something, and it can figure out how to do that. Um, so we just don't need the docs as much. And then I think a real big thing is even for those people that are seeing um, these ads and are seeing that Tailwind Plus exists, I think AIs are good enough at UI to just not need these templates. You know, AIs don't make the best UIs. I'm sure like a designer can come in and like do so much better, but they're usually pretty good looking and you can continue prompting it to get the look you want. So for someone like me who is not um, that good at design, but like I kind of know what I want or I kind of know it looks bad and I just want something minimal. AI works perfectly for me because I'm like, no, not like that, make it more like this and I can eventually get something that looks like what I want. And so even those people that are seeing the template ads may not actually need them. They'll just prompt the AI to do it anyway. So why would they drop, you know, the $300 or whatever on Tailwind Plus when um, they can just do it for free or at least for the cost of the token. So what does this mean for Tailwind? So first, uh, development is slowing down. It, they're focused on ways to save the business and keep the project alive versus improving it. I mean, you could make the case that they honestly don't need that many engineers anyway, because, you know, AI is pretty fast and this is just a templating library. So like maybe AI can help fill the gap there, but 
at least for the near term, development is slowing down. Second, Tailwind will need to find a new revenue source. Some companies are choosing to sponsor the library, which may fill the gap somewhat, but um, it might be a pretty big gap to, to switch. And so we don't know if they'll actually fill the full gap there. And then third, I think, you know, the library is going to stick around. It's one of the most popular styling libraries, especially with AI. And so even if project loses support, the code itself will still be available and be around same way you can still get jQuery, even though like I think development has stopped on that. And it's probable that another team will pick it up to support it, um, though probably in a less active role. Like if all the creators go away, someone will probably fork it and then it'll be supported by the community, at least in maintenance mode long term. So who's at risk and how to defend against like AI undercutting arbitrage com competition stuff like that. So AI is rapidly changing the ecosystem. People can now vibe code whole apps, articles and business plans. I know a lot of people like don't like hearing that and are like, well, it's not that good, blah, blah, blah. But like, I think we have to be real with ourselves that AI is getting better at these things and can do a decent job. It's not perfect. It's not going to beat an expert, but like, is it going to beat someone who's lazy? Like probably. And so businesses need to provide value that AI cannot to stay alive. We should assume that AI will continue to improve while it's unclear that if it will plateau like next year or if it's going to keep doubling for the next 20 years. Um, so there's a lot of like gray area and what this will actually look like. But the thing that we do know is that it's important to continue monitoring its capabilities to stay ahead of the competition. And actually just think of this like if you're a business, you're going to be seeing what the competition is doing. So if they like come out with a new feature that people love, you'll probably um, build one to compete. It's the same with AI, except AI is raising the, the floor for everyone. And so it's if AI can do it, like you really have zero moat. And um, because that means anyone, even if they're not already in the business, can take over your business. So keep monitoring just like you would other competition, because um, otherwise it's going to eat your business. And so here's a few areas and things that you can do to kind of make your business robust to these changes. So the first is like templates and boilerplates. Um, if someone can prompt it in an hour, why would they pay for this? Tailwind Plus sold UI templates for $300 that AI can now generate in minutes and for just the cost of tokens, which probably is like under your subscription plan. So it's basically free to you. Um, so the value proposition just like isn't there anymore. Same with me for things like Cloud Seed, which is my, you know, F-sharp boilerplate. I've got, I'm selling it for like $40 now, but if people can just use AI to spin up an F-sharp project, then they don't really need that. And that's something that I need to think about going forward. I think the defense against Against this is to actually just have deep workflow integration. So things like single page templates are one shottable by AI, but full workflows that are maintained long term are hard to prompt it into existence. I kind of think of it like templates you use once and then you get started um, and then you don't need it after that and you can reuse it everywhere. And um, because of that, it's a simple business, but it's also so simple that AI can just like rebuild it themselves. Whereas if you have a full workflow, whether it's vertical, horizontal, and you're maintaining that, and so you're providing this full value chain to someone, that's something that people are willing to, to pay for. Um, because it's not work that they're willing to do themselves. And so if you think about Rippling, which stitches together like a bunch of HR products so that it's all like under one ecosystem, um, or Stripe, which handles payments end to end, they've spent years, probably like hundreds, if not thousands of person years, I'm um, doing this engineering, I'm making this reliable, making it work across all the different um, vendors and stuff like that, and then getting the actual compliance certifications that allow them to do it in the regions and places that they have. That's stuff that AI can't really shortcut. You can probably vibe code any of the individual apps or interfaces that each of these provide, but actually getting the system working end to end in the real world is much harder and something that AI um, and most startups, even medium sized businesses would have a hard time catching up on. The next at risk business is info products, courses, tutorials, and blogs. And I kind of see this as like, this is the information and kind of the templates or like the application of this info, but it's basically just an info product um, either way. AI commoditizes pattern matching knowledge. And so if your content can be learned by just part a few dozen projects or even books, let's be real, the AIs have been trained on all these books that they didn't even have license to, then the AI already, already knows it or it could know that. And so the defense against this is really to just have deep and specialized expertise you're going to have to provide knowledge beyond what a generic LLM can spit out. And so this is going to be things like, you know, HIPAA compliance, fintech regulations, high performance distributed systems, domains where the training data is sparse and being wrong is expensive and or being right has like a huge um, net benefit. Like I guess an example of that would be like system design. If you're really good at system design um, and you get that right, it can have like multiplicative impacts on the entire system or code base at large. And so that's another example um, where maybe the 
cost of being wrong isn't expensive, but the benefit of being right is, is pretty um, high. So I think the more specialized this niche is or this domain is, the less likely that AI has good data for it or can be relied upon to be accurate at the edges. I think this is like if you um, use AI a lot in a domain that you're an expert in, you kind of see that like uh, it gets the basics right, but as you go further, it's kind of like missing on more of the advanced subjects. And that's really what you're going to need um, if you want to beat out the AIs in these info products or even your, your SaaSes, to be honest. But I would just caution that like it only matters if this is valuable to a customer that would pay you money because you could be a deep specialist, but like AI is not that good at it, but people don't really care if it's that good at it, as we'll talk about in a second. So simple SaaS tools are another one that's at risk, um, things that are just doing one core function, because you know if the core functionality is promptable in an afternoon, then you're competing with free. I'm thinking things like uptime checkers that people pay for, um, even things like Postman or something. At this point, you could basically just build a simple code-based version yourself if you don't want to pay for their enterprise fees. Um, all of these things that are just kind of doing one thing, I think are at risk of being eaten by AI if they don't have that like deep workflow integration or doing something super niche that's like hard to do the prompting. Now defense here is that you can have quality so high or prices so low that competing just like doesn't make sense. Um, it's just cheaper to pay you the 10 bucks a month and like get it. Um, because doing it myself, I'd have to like hire engineers or something. And I think that, you know, AI generates things that like kind of work. And so if that's your bar, uh, you lose. And this is both the bar for like how good your thing is or the bar for like what your customers will accept because a lot of them don't need all the quality that, that you could provide them. An example here is like AWS S3's 11.9's durability and their price per gigabytes are nearly impossible to match with a prompted solution. Um, you'd basically have to buy, hire a couple engineers, probably like way more than that to actually get to 11.9's. So if you need that durability, um, then it's really hard to get that at the cost that they provide it. But again, you have to be careful about this because many customers don't really care about 11.9's. Um, like, does it really matter if it's down like for that much, it can probably be down for an hour and it doesn't really matter for a lot of systems. And so competing on quality there might not make sense. Um, example of this is Zig moved off of AWS to self-hosted because they were paying AWS all this money for um, their bandwidth. And they're like, who cares? Like, this is just a stupid distributable. Um, people can get it or not. This isn't groundbreaking. Like they can get it from other mirrors. And so they moved off because they just didn't want to pay for the 11 nines of durability because they just didn't need it. And honestly, myself, I did that too. I'm self-hosting all of my sites and services. And, you know, I do that because, well, one, I wanted to learn. I think it's cool. But really, it's like way cheaper than doing this on cloud. And I know that for my purposes, I don't need to be up all the time and it's up enough for me. Um, and so I also went that route myself. Finally, manual computer work, things like scheduling, research, data entry, um, whether this is like someone doing this or this is your SaaS or product is like fixing this. AI agents are getting really good at this stuff with things like computer use, um, but even just like hitting APIs, like downloading CLIs ad hoc and like making it do this stuff. And so I think all of this will just be start to be automated away. These things that are just like time saving tasks, just kind of like annoying manual stuff. Um, the AIs are going to eat this market up uh, pretty holistically. And the defense for this, um, and applies to other ones too, is to look for non-promptable moats. And so this is things like licenses, proprietary data, API access, regulatory compliance. Um, examples are Stripe and Plaid have banking, rela banking relationships that AI can't prompt its way into. You gotta submit forms, you gotta be like um, up to certain uh, compliance certifications. Uh, you have to pass background checks and all this stuff to get access to like one thing. And so to beat them on all of the integrations that they have is like quite hard. Another example, Zillow has the ML less data access to all the different regions. And this is something you can kind of get around by scraping other websites, but to like be a truly um, competitive business, you really need these correct relationships. And again, uh, you got to get over the hurdles, pay the license fees, um, stuff like that. And these are just not technical advantages. They're legal and relational ones that AI is going to have a hard time overcoming with, with purely technical improvements. You know, that AI could get 10x better and probably get better at like scraping this data, but to do it legally within um, the system that would allow you to build a real business without getting like fined out of existence, um, you would need to still fix these hurdles next. 
So AI commoditizes information, but not expertise, deep integrations, or high quality and compliance levels. And so if your business is just information, it's at risk of being eaten by AI. For my side projects, I'm thinking about pivoting towards more software tools and domain expertise versus shallow info products. Those worked in the past, but the future potential really seems low. And even for things like this video um, and these blog posts, like I kind of knew it would never be like that big, but really um, with the advent of AI, like I think even people reading blog posts like this is gonna go downhill and people will just use AIs to summarize, to be honest. Now, if you use Tailwind and would like to keep it running, you should consider sponsoring them to keep the project alive and evolving. This is one of the best things you can do to support open source software and is a practice that I try to do myself yearly, um, evaluating the projects that I use and then donating to them to try and keep them alive. Because let's be real, open source maintenance is kind of like thankless work and yet the entire internet kind of relies on it and basically every single business. Now, if you like this post, you might also like if AI can code, what will software engineers do? You might also be interested in how I actually code with AI as a senior software engineer. And finally, open source software is unsustainable. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.